So let's just say we get a lot of these quite thorough briefs for a new website project. Yeah. What do you feel is some of the key starting points before really undertaking, if you like, the design and the build of the thing? It's, it, it can seem slightly trite in many ways to kind of go through the, <laughs> the ubiquitous list, right? Which is ROI, which is cost reduction, which is all those kind of things that we've ch chatted about over the years and we've chatted about today. But the start, if, if I, I've worked client side as well. So, so if we're looking at a website, you cannot treat a website build design output you know what you want to achieve from it in isolation and a lot of customers do mm. they go we want a new website we want it done like this we want it to do this great what's going on with your call center then what's going on with your stores what's going on with your the guys who are speaking to real life people in real life what's going on with your this is your area of expertise but how are you communicating your brand effectively in, through marketing because that can't, your website is utterly useless and pointless, frankly, if you haven't got it in the context of the whole. And my, my mind gets changed, you know, I think, what was it, Mark Twain said that you only, you only know you've got a mind if you're changing it mm. a lot. Because mm. if you're just stuck, that's, that's the problem I have with thought leaders, right? They never change their mind. Mm. If you haven't got a mind then, because if you've got a mind, you can change it. That's the whole point of it. So I flick around quite a lot on this. In certain situations, the website is far less important than it was five, six, seven, eight years ago because of multi-channel stuff, right? Because of social, because of that whole area, because of apps, because of print. You know, there's, there's a, you know, I think I'm a, what, my generation X? Yeah. 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 Um, I know people my age, I'd, and I'm one of them, I'd rather get a magazine some for some brands for some interactions. I don't look at, there's some websites I think, oh no, I'd rather kind of flick through a magazine because it's, I like it, I like the, the aesthetics of it, I like the time it takes, I like the fact that it stops me looking at a screen. I can sit there with a beer or a wine or a coffee and just take my time and learn, absorb it, absorb it more. So, so I, think, I think there's a terrible propensity for people to either underplay the role of a website in terms of a touch point for a customer and sometimes overplay it. And it's, it's getting the balance right. So whenever we're, we're speaking with clients or I'm speaking with a client, it's like, okay, do you understand where the website sits in your business? In the, you know, you remember when, we, oh, remember when we first met, we were talk, we, we used to have intranets and internets, right? Yes. You don't tend to have such a focus on intranets anymore because all the staff are using the website mm. as, a, as a knowledge base. Okay, well, that, that's an example of changing where the site sits. So it's got to be, it's got to be the whole, and developers and strategists and um, techies don't like that. They don't like having to sit down with marketeers and creatives and brand people, do they, generally? Um, I think it's, pick, again, picking through the conversations with a client, isn't it? And, yeah. and, and asking some very pragmatic and straightforward questions. I think that's where we have the edge over some pure tech mm. companies because we'll look at it from a more holistic view, but we'll also be pragmatic with it and go, yeah, we get the UX is important and we yeah. understand all the different parameters there, but yeah. let's just start with some basic principles. You know, why are we doing this in the yeah. first place? And what's the main objectives of that? Yeah. You know, what's there's good look like for you? There's a fundamental challenge though, is that with stuff like that, because the way the internet's been developed by, you know, we can, by three or four companies, right? Mm -hmm. Let's be honest. Um, that completely constrains the ability of anybody and any agency and any individual to do stuff that's truly creative and really meets the needs of people, of humans. You've got, you know, Google's got material libraries. Google tells you what content you should have on your site. Google tells you what keyword, you know, all that kind of stuff. That desire to be visible to everyone in many ways for clients completely negates their ability to be different. 
mm. and their ability to meet the needs of their existing customers because they're so focused on what Google, as an example, or Facebook, any of them, tell businesses about going out and getting new customers, but they forget about, and it ha it's happened in business for years, right? You're a new customer, you get a discount. I'm an existing, oh, I'm an existing customer, I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, and that's manifesting itself in digital, and that manifests itself in customers coming to us and asking us those questions. When we go, okay, how important are your existing customers? Oh, yeah, 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 they're important, but we want to increase our customer base. Okay, but they require two very different approaches in mm. my mm. in my mind. It's not to say they can't it can't be delivered, but like you said, it requires thought, it requires challenge, it requires us pushing back on what the client thinks is important to them and going, well actually yeah, but you know, 